Hi, this is Dr. Sue Cooper with a lecture video for Accounting 300 at Towson University. In this video, we're going to be looking at the chapter one lecture notes, page five. In this video, we're gonna look at the AIS element number four, software. And uh, I've listed out several types of software here. Um, I'll put the types in this column. Uh, the first one is Excel. It's a spreadsheet software. Easy data input, processing, visualization. We're gonna be using this a lot in this class. Microsoft Access is a database builder. Um, we might use this in this class. We'll see. There, there may be some exercises that use it and uh, we may be able to get it to work, maybe not. So that is yet to be seen if we're actually gonna be using Access or not. A lot of the features of the database builder in M MS stands for Microsoft. A lot of the database building features that are available in Access are now we can do in Excel. So we don't have to use Access to do them. And Access is a little bit touchy, but it does give us some information on how to do SQL um, queries. So we may use it for some of that. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes, just depending on how the software uh, reacts to your own personal computers at your home, because Access is not supported by Microsoft, even though it is included in the uh, 365 subscription. So I'll let you know about that. QuickBooks, we are definitely going to be using QuickBooks in this class. Uh, it's a pre-built database specifically for accounting. So it'll help us speed through a lot of the accounting process with uh, we'll be entering transactions and then it will just spit out reports and we can use those if we needed to, to make decisions. I'm gonna be teaching you how to use QuickBooks. SAP is a very, very large enterprise resource planning system. That's what ERP stands for. Now it's going to include uh, accounting information. Uh, but there's going to be a lot more than that. So SAP is similar to the PeopleSoft that we use here at Towson. So when you log into your TU account, you're going to have access to your schedule and your bookstore account and your tuition account and your parking and everything and your grades. It's all connected uh, and your financial aid, everything. That's what ERP systems do. It connects every part of the company, not just accounting together and integrates it all with accounting and so that you can make any kind of report that you need. Now, these are very, very expensive. I have used some SAP in the past. Uh, uh, when I was teaching at Salisbury University, we had a, a subscription to a service that let us use SAP. It's one of the most prolific ERP systems uh, available in the world. I do not think we're gonna be using it at all. Power BI and Tableau are both very similar. They're data visualization tools for um, presenting your data. Once you have your data collected and processed and summarized and you wanna present it as information that people can use to make decisions, we often use Power BI and Tableau. Uh, a lot of people will still just use Excel because it, it'll do everything, but it doesn't, it's, it's kind of an all purpose tool where Power BI, uh, Power BI and Tableau are specific for presenting data and data visualization. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so now down to the ERP system so we know what this is. Uh, an ERP system is a centralized database that collects data from throughout the firm. It includes data from orders, customers, sales, inventory, employees. As the data are integrated into one single centralized database to become useful information, authorized employees throughout the firm have access to the information that they need to make decisions. So back up here, QuickBooks and SAP are both include elements of accounting information systems so that you can uh, record, process, and report accounting data. The difference is QuickBooks is small. It's for small companies. If you have 200 employees or less, depending on how many transactions you do a day, you might be able to get away with QuickBooks. SAP is for big companies. It's a big ERP system and the implementation, implementation is expensive. Now there's a lot of different ERPs. So I've got a bunch here. We've got PeopleSoft, that's the one we use at uh, Towson, NetSuite, Sage, Oracle, SAP ERP, and SAP S4 HANA. Now these two, it's a very important difference. So SAP e ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. Well, I can't highlight what I want, which is what it says up here at the top. What's an ERP system? 
Um, and SAP, it's a German company. They, they have separated their ERP system from this S4 HANA. And what the difference is, is uh, that their servers operate very differently. So you have in traditional servers, tables of data that are linked together, and then you can share information from one department to another because they have tables that are linked. And then when you need a report, it'll pull all the information together and make you a, uh, make a report. One of the problems with that system is that there is now sometimes so much data that when you want to pull a report, it actually takes, it can take hours for all of the summarizing and calculating and totals to be calculated on the report because there's so much data. So the S4 HANA has what we kind of, what we call or think of as a, sometimes like a cubic server instead of a flat file server. So instead of having flat tables of data, we have what we call data cubes sort of. And so in the background, when you're not pulling reports, it'll it'll automatically uh, compute every possible total and some summarized amount that you could ever possibly want. So that when you go to pull the report, it's already done all the calculations. It just has to figure out which calculations to pull from. Now, obviously the storage in that is gonna seem excessive, However, the processing power then becomes much less. Uh, you need less processing power, but more storage to store all of those calculated totals. Um, and uh, it generally, storage is cheaper than processing power. So we are able to have more data, more information ready at our fingertips without having to wait for all the processing when we use these new and improved servers. So that is what we are looking at, the wave of the future, these cubic file servers um, like S4 HANA. So companies that have implemented SAP ERP in the last 10 years, maybe they paid $100 million for their implementation, are going to have to switch everything over to the new servers within the next 10 years. So this isn't something you can just set it and forget it. You're going to have to keep updating as uh, we get more and more and more data and better and better processing tools. All right, element five, the IT infrastructure. And I mentioned earlier, this is related to all of the connected computers. We're not going to deal with hardware in this class. Uh, how to network computers and hardware together is beyond the scope. All right, in the next video, we will look at page six and be finished with the lecture for chapter one.